Hi, welcome to the Stitch TV show. I'm Lynn. And I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch is an online quilt talk show. It's the perfect soundtrack for your sewing room. In addition to our talk shows, we also host virtual stitch-ins, tutorial videos, and online quilt classes. You can learn more at thestitchtvshow.com. Today we're going to be talking about one block wonder quilts and pineapple quilts. So our show today is brought to you by our friends at QT Fabrics, and you can learn more about them in the link in the show notes. So conveniently, QT Fabrics is um, known for doing a lot of novelty and panels, which work well with our first topic. So you may have noticed we're in a little different setup if you've watched our show for a long time. Uh, and that's due to the, you know, pandemic in the current social distancing measures in place. But moving past that, let us talk about one block wonder quilts. So what are they, Lynn? It's where you take a, um, a fabric and you, it's made from one fabric and you, look at the repeat in the fabric. So anytime fabric is printed, there'll be a, a repeat of when the pattern starts and when it starts again, and that's the repeat. And normally repeats can be between 18 and 26 inches, depending upon the design. And you either buy six repeats or eight repeats, uh, depending on which type of one block wonder you wanna do. And essentially, you're making a hexagon, or I don't remember the the other octagon. One, octagon, yep, octagon of that that fabric because you cut the same pattern for the same triangle six times or eight times, so that you can spin that look. And it looks like a kaleidoscope. It does. It does. So. Um, they're they're all the they were all the rage like years ago and they've come back in as all the rage again and I just think they're really neat to do and if you've never done one try it it should be in your list of bucket list of quilts to try and you will either fall in love with them or you will do one and you will never do it again or you will do one you will think upon it fondly but you will think thank goodness I don't have to do that again and then you will be in a fabric shop and you will see a panel or a piece of fabric and you're like, that would be amazing as a one block wonder. And then you're back in, <laughs> which is what happened to me. <laughs> I have done one and I really liked how it turned out. The one behind uh, you. The one behind me. Because it's dark. I'm sorry. It's dark. If I turn this light on, will it help just for a second? A yeah. Little, oh, yeah, that's better for back there. Yep. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So, um, that is from a panel, and the panel is this. It is a tree. It is a tree. But you can see there's lots of really bright colors in it, and just and then it had this really kind of striped border, um, which I think Pam ran into a border she wasn't as thrilled with, but didn't realize that till later. Um, but so there, it had a lot of stuff to work with. Um, and I bought seven panels of it because I wanted one panel. You can tell it's not quilted yet. I wanted one panel that I would put on the back so that I could say, this is what that all came from. So similarly, um, I have done one before, but it is with its new home. <laughs> so... Right. Um, I have a fondness for Van Gogh in that style of painting. So I started with, well, I bought seven of these panels and it's right. his iris painting. <laughs> I love it. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's um, spring in the south. In, right in, in progress. So this is what the blocks look like individually when they're cut. Yeah. And so lots of lovely florals. And then you start to get some of the vase, which was brown. And then there's some, because there's a lot of yellow background that just look like this. We are like, oh, okay. And then there's some very striking border that you're like, well, all right then. <laughs> That's what that is. I, I just think they're, they really turn out neat. And essentially, anytime you cut a triangle, you have, um, you know, three different points, 
So what you choose to put in the center is going to look different even within those same set of triangles. And so you have a lot of play with it, not just in um, how they go together, but also how you choose to what's in the center of each triangle. Like if she would have done that one with the green outside, it would have had a completely different look. Um, and sometimes if you have a panel that's got a repetitive flower or repetitive, like it's the same image and it gets cut the same image, it can still look different. Um, so I just, there's a lot of creativity with them and a lot of, it amazes me how they turn out. And sometimes, honestly, the ugliest fabric looks phenomenal in these things. That is what my first one was. It was at a mega sale and the quilt store was just trying to like sell these panels that no one else had wanted because they were like weird and kind of cartoony. And I thought, well, I'm, I knew I was going to take this one block wonder class. So I, and the panels were like $3 a panel. Yeah. I remember and normally they're like 12. seven, eight, 10 bucks, you know, back in, back then I think they were seven. Um, but normally panels can either be, um, they're usually around 24 inches. They can be up to a yard at 36. Um, sometimes they're as skinny as 18, but 24 seems to be pretty standard for a repeat for a panel. And I thought, well, I need seven of these. And they were on like clearance for $3. And I thought, well, there's a lot of hot pink and some green. And it was like this funky house with weird trees and stuff. And when you cut it up, you can't tell. Just It's just shapes and color. And, and so that's, it's a fun way to just like, oh, cheap fabric. I'm going to make a quilt. Now, yeah. it requires precision for cutting. And matching. Yeah. You have to like line up the six or the eight we're just going to talk about six for the sake of clarity like exactly stacked on top of each other and that can be a little tricky right you know, there's a whole there's a series of books on these so get the book because you cannot make one based on what we're just talking about here <laughs> right so like you would line up the point of this butterfly to the point of the butterfly on all six pieces below it below yeah. it. and you would put a safety pin in there to make sure that when you're cutting it, it's not, and lots of safety pins actually, that yeah. when you're cutting it, you're cutting exactly the same strip on all six layers. Um, so there, uh, the, the cutting and the setup for this is definitely a very much of a time consuming process. Yes. In making one of these, yeah. Well, and even when you get into the piecing, because you're fiddling with like, oh, what if I turn it this way? Or what if I turn it that yeah. way? And so there's a little bit more finessing as you go through it. Right. Um, so, now, there are no Y seams. So do not do not let that put you off. Because normally when you're sewing with triangles and hexagons, there's a chance of Y seams. There's not. Um, because of how this goes together. There's not. Right. So you're essentially sewing two halves. And then you pin them together. So you get like the look of the hexagon. But when I go to sew them together, I would unpin this and then I'm just sewing. You're sewing right. bias, but it's triangles. And like, I don't end up with the Y seam here. Because you're sewing rows. Right. So you would take two of those hexagons and you would sew it into a row. So you would take a half of each hexagon and then that's going to go into a row and then you're sewing the rows together. So right. it's all straight line. There's no Y seams. It's definitely not as intimidating as it looks from a sewing perspective. Right. The cutting, different story. It's a, de it's definitely a cutting challenge. Yeah. So <clears throat> now because there's, there was the original book, one block wonder quilts. And then the book that I have is actually One Block Wonder Quilts Cubed because they're um, adding in techniques where in the triangle shape, they're using coordinating solids and creating what essentially looks like an MC Escher painting <laughs> where there's like depth, right. dimension. So it, it's like an optical illusion. And so they're bringing in like cubed, <laughs> just it's real wild. Um, I'm not going to go with that look for this quilt, just because the style of the panel is, you know, a different artistic style. Um, but there's a lot of other things you can add to it. And 
I, is, go ahead. I was going to say what makes it interesting too is how you finish the edges because you just sew it together as one thing and then like lop trim off any extra like triangle bits to square it up or leave them there and just have like a wacky edge binding. Now I just trimmed it up and put a black binding because I just felt like it, there was so much going on. Yeah. With the richness of the colors in my panel. But I have seen just FYI, I have seen some really clever one done, some clever ones finished that were like, you know, those Halloween panels with the skeleton man. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Those were so cool because you got the same bone like six times kind of, and it was just, it, it was really clever the way that one turned out. I thought it was really neat. Um, so don't, and again, ugly fabrics tend to work really well um, or not as attractive but what you want is a lot of contrast and um, yes, a lot of design, a lot of design, like a subtle pastel, not going to be as impactful. You'll still get a beautiful watercolor look, but you could get that just by piecing squares of it instead of going into the whole like cutting triangle stuff. And big prints, this is <clears throat> great for big prints. So if you buy big prints and you're like, I don't know what to do with these, one block wonders could be a great choice for big prints. Now, that being said, you're cutting it up too. You're cutting it into definitely yeah. non-recognizable. Like that big print that you may be in love with will not be recognizable. Um, or it will be, and you run into the situation that a friend of ours has, who she's a fan of superheroes and got like the superhero print and did a one block wonder. And so there are certain blocks where it's just um, Spider-Man crotch. And you're yeah. just like, well, there it is. That's the that's the focal for that block. <laughs> Here is Thor's butt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which wow. is a look. That is a look. Iron, Iron Man's arm, you know. Yep. It's yeah. definitely. Mjolnir's forever. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely an interesting. Uh, now, what I will say, too, though, is. I think one of the designers that I've seen more of these by than any other designer is Cave. Yes, the chrysanthemum prints and, and the big prints that he's got really work well here. Oh, uh, yeah. And his stuff does this well. And I think it's because the depth of color he has in his prints just automatically. Um, but I will say that I have seen more One Block Wonders done out of Cave fabrics than I have of probably any other kind. Um, and his work really well in this technique. Really well in this technique. So yeah. if you're wanting to try it out, the only thing with CAFE is um, to find his repeat. <laughs> it's a little... It, it, because he's so dense in his design and, you know, the design is really designed well. It's hard to tell where a repeat is. Now you'll find it, but it's just, it takes a little bit more to look than like a panel, which you can do. Yeah. And I think if you're using a print fabric instead of a panel, the repeat can be smaller. Sometimes it could be as small as 12 inches. Yep. I think a more standard is 16, possibly 18, I think is, is. I was going to say 18 for the standard, but you may be right with 16, but I think it's between those two. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere in there. So just, you know, start to look around that length of fabric for the repeat. Now, when you're getting seven lengths of that, like six lengths of 18 inch, if you do the math, is smaller than six lengths of 24 inch. And what that means is your quilt's gonna be a little smaller. <laughs> or, or you add more border to it, or you do multiples of repeats. Yeah. Or you cut 24 inches, but then you're gonna have like some waste. Yeah. I mean, there's a way to make it bigger. You buy yeah. 12 repeats instead of six. To six. Which means you're buying a bolt of fabric, honestly. It has a lot of fabric. It's a lot of fabric. Um, not that it can't be done. It totally can be done. But um, this, I mean, that's a good lap size, but it's a panel. So it wasn't, I bet it wasn't, where did I put it? Um, it's not, oh, uh, maybe 18. Yeah. This may be 18. Just mine is 24. Yeah, mine's not that wide. 
Yeah. yeah. So mine will end up around lap size. I had used a 24 inch panel for my first one and turned it into a twin quilt. And that was because I added borders to it. Right. And I just added one, like, I mean, I could add more, let's be honest. Um, it's not quilted yet. So it's, you know, it could have another border. The world is your oyster. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that being said, I, I just don't think it needs another border. So I'm done. Yeah. So I need to quilt it because it's been done for a few years. Yep. Yeah. We, mine we, will we, we took the class together. together didn't we we huh? took the class together, didn't we? I don't know if I, I don't know if you took the class. I did. I took the class from Melinda. Yeah, but I thought you took it at a different one because we got our fabrics at different times. Because I think I did mine and you saw it and liked it and then went and bought the panel, your panel later, because you liked it so much. Like you saw hers from the Halloween fabric. Yeah, that that was the, so it was so cute. Yeah. I, and I'm not a Halloween fan, but it was, it was definitely like cute how it turned out. It was one of the ghastly prints, I think. Um, Alexander. Henry. Henry. Not okay. Hamilton. No, I did. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. that is exactly what went through my brain. Oh, I know. <laughs> Alexander Hamilton. I was singing that in the shower this morning. I'm not giving away my shot. Okay. Okay. So, um, any other tips? Oh, you will need a triangle ruler for this, like a 60 degree ruler. Now, I have a 10 inch one. It doesn't have to be that big. Um, but I would say like a up to a six inch, like 60 degree ruler is about what you're looking for to do this. Cause you cut triangles a lot. Yeah, but if you're doing the eight, I think it's a 45 degree ruler. Isn't that right? Yeah. Cause you're cutting 90 and a half. Yep. Uh -huh. So um, it just depends if you're doing the eight or the six, I will tell you, I kind of prefer the six in the look. Um, and I don't know why. I think it's because it gives you bigger chunks of fabric. Yeah. And the other one looks almost a little too cut up kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I kind of like the 60 degree looks better than the 45 degree looks. But, you know, it's up to you. And if you do a 45 degree look, you have to fill in like those trying those don't mesh together. You have to have little fillers. You mean little like corner triangles. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's not going to have the blended look that the the 60 degree is. So just take that into consideration, you know, and the best thing to do is either find a class or get the book. And the book's really good with instructions. And I think she's got three, three or four out. Yeah. I, I think I might have her third. With I the think I have the second and the third. And I thought she had another one out beyond that. And, and I will say, like, if you're, if you find the one with the cube instructions, like mine is, and you're like, oh, but how do I make the basic thing? That's in there. That's just yeah. at the back of the book. Yeah. You don't <laughs> so need. Any of them will come with the basic instructions right. for the standard. Yes. Yes, it will. So, but her stuff's really, it's very cool. And I'm sorry, I don't remember the name of the author. We'll have it in the show notes. Oh, good. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> it's not just me. Nope. Um, but they're fun. They're fun to do. Um, I will have to say I land on the side of I did it. I'm good. I'll probably do another one in about 10 years. <laughs> You'll be like, oh, I forgot. It was so cool looking. Yeah, because I did my first one probably yeah. not 10 years ago, maybe like eight. Yeah. Um, yeah. I had this panel for a while because when the Van Gogh fabric came out, I was like, I am here for that. So I bought some. And then I'm like, oh, one day. And then I have been in a mode of just kind of, I didn't consider this a UFO because it wasn't cut up or anything, but it was just like sitting there on the shelf, like taunting me. And I'm like, yeah, that needs to be a thing. And then I, I put it in as a show topic and like, so now I got to do it. <laughs> That's why it went in as a show topic. I wanted it. <laughs> like, I got to get this done. Sure so, did. Yeah. Likewise, the next topic. Because here's an awkward segue into that. Normally, we'd have a nice mid-show break. Not going to happen with this Not setup. Today. So we're going to move on into pineapple quilts. So I have one of them hanging behind me. So this thing. Um, so pineapple quilt is a little bit like a log cabin. 
in that it's built from the center out. So you start I, with the log. in I, terms of construction. I always thought it was a log cabin on point. Um, yeah, because the corners instead of the sides. Yeah, you know. So the one behind me, I did using paper piecing, which is a big old twelve-inch block. And so when you paper piece, you get numbered in order. So you start with your center and then you add like your other things, you know, around the edges. And this was um, a freebie that came with my quilt con goodie bag this year. Yeah, that was cool. So I made one quilt from it. I could have used all of all 40 blocks and made a big honking quilt. I didn't need that many. <laughs> Give me two smaller ones, please. <laughs> and then you've done one too, Lynn. Oh, this was one of the first quilts I did actually. So mine is a, I mean. It's a little different style from mine, yeah. Yeah. But the blocks are bigger. The blocks are, yeah, probably a little bit bigger. I mean, I, I'm doing this backwards, so it feels like. I know. There we go. I think that's right. Yeah. So mine is all, I collected um, dog uh, prints, like dog cartoon prints. So all of the corners are different dog cartoon prints. So there's kind of a theme to it. And then the center is dog bones. And then I just use this consistent background color, which is this red bubble kind of print. Mm -hmm. um, and then this was the craziness. And this goes back to our topic from last um, show. Um, right. A one, a two inch half square triangle border and then a one inch half square triangle border. Nope. I know, right? Hard pass. It was awesome, but I had to figure out because. Oh, how to make them come together, yeah. Yeah, so you had to, this had to be done a certain way. This border right here kind of changed a little bit so that it, I had to put this border in so that these would fit up against that so that became a checkerboard and then the bones triangle or yeah half square triangles and then a big so this is a queen size quilt um and it's on a um it's on my guest bedroom so if you come stay with me this is the quilt you will sleep under the puppy dog my puppy dog pineapple quilt and the back of it and god love this man he's an artist and he's so talented um the back of it is dogs doing yoga which I thought was hilarious. So it's all these dogs in yoga poses. And my friend um, who's an artist looked at this quilt and he went, oh, that back is so cool. And I'm thinking, honey, it's got a one inch half square triangle border around it. And you're worried about the yoga dogs? Yes. You're going to need yoga when I'm done with you. I'm kidding. I'm so kidding. My bark is so worse than my bite. I'm kidding. Um, the so one behind me is the second one I've done. Um, the first one I did was for my mom. And in true sound of music fashion, she sent me her kitchen curtains and said, I really love this fabric, but I bought new curtains. So could you turn this into a quilt? <laughs> oh, yes. That sound of music. When you said curtains i was like that's gone with the wind what are you talking both. about it's both you're right it is <laughs> it is uh but it was a cotton print <clears throat> and it was like a, a beach scene and so i and my parents love hawaii they've been several times and so it's like oh pineapples perfect so i did a pineapple quilt holy moly those pieces were a lot smaller than the one behind me mine smaller than the one behind you Whew. so this What's um, behind me is actually sized to work with jelly roll strips, so two and a half inch. Uh, At Porter Shop, and they do a lot with pre-cuts. So, yeah, so there's any number of paper piecing patterns out there. There's some that are free available online where you print yourself. Now, there you're limited to the size of the paper that you're printing on. Now, so I did paper piecing. Is yours paper piecing or something else? You did a ruler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there are specialty rulers, too. Yeah, and I did... I did a ruler and I think it was Guylene Fitzgerald's ruler. Yeah. I think she's got a pretty decent one. 
Um, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. And no, maybe not. Um, I did it. It was it was from two designers out of the Colorado area, and it was their book called Pineapple Pizzazz. I didn't do. I had this done before I met Guileen, so it wasn't her ruler, um, but it was their ruler. Okay. And I will look for that so I can show it to you. Um, show notes. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> look for that today, um, and I'll send you the cover of the book, but. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was called pineapple. But I'm sorry, I don't have that because I didn't even think to get that out. But yeah, I did mine with a ruler. Um, and this book is all different pineapples and all different ways to do pineapples. It's actually a really good book. Um, and I took a class from the ladies in Nashville when AQS was in Nashville. So, you know, that was years and years and years ago. Yep. So, yeah. Um, but it was really good. They're the ones who took, who taught me um, machine applique too, actually. So yeah, there's a lot of different ways to make pineapple quilts. Mm -hmm. Most of them involve a lot of trimming. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of we, trimming involved. And we talked about this last show, and I think that this is still relevant. This is one of those blocks you need to trim as you go. Yes. And square up as you go. Because if you don't, you'll have a wonky pineapple. Which um, is a look. That is totally acceptable as well. If you're yeah. into wonky piecing and, and that's what you're going for. If that's not what you intended, yeah. that's a bad well, day. Because you want so many of the seams to match when you're joining the blocks together. So it has that continuous look. Yeah. And it's going to look different if you like... Um, you can tell the difference in Pam and I's in that we did the same corners, but mine has more than hers. I, I think mine has like seven rows mm -hmm. and I don't think yours has as many, maybe four, five, but mine oh, it has three color, yeah, but my center is a lot smaller than hers is. Yeah. Mine, mine was sized to work with a charm pack for the center and jelly roll strips for. Right. And for these, the, these are smaller in yeah. the width kind of thing so and you can make them like just it's really cool what you could do with this one block by changing but it's one of those I do think this is one of those blocks that um, aside from trimming up it is really easy to chain piece not so much with when you're paper piecing it's hard to chain piece anything paper piecing that's true with but the, using with a ruler, the, it is for sure. With the ruler, I think I chain piece this thing. So um, it was really easy to, because you cut your strips the length they were supposed to be for the next row around. Um, and then you just, and mine was a grab and go. Like I wasn't placing, aside from the solid, you know, the, the consistent color with the red, these were all just random grab. And then they were just dog print so it just didn't matter which one I grabbed kind of thing look at that cute little Scotty and there ended up being one cat in it because one of the prints had a had a cat with the dogs and so when this hung at a um, quilt show which is the first quilt show I entered um, it didn't win anything which is cool I don't care uh, but I said in the artist statement that there's one cat in it and I remember seeing this these little kids going Where's the cat? We're looking, you know, they were looking for the cat the whole time, which I thought was kind of, it was kind of interactive and fun. So, um, and I think the the white glove people um, actually found it and would wait for people to go, I can't find it. And then they would point it out, which was kind of neat. Yeah. yeah, mine was also scrappy. So I knew that I had a ton of just cool color strips. So mostly blues and greens, a little bit of purple, aquas. Um, and I just had a pile of them in my table. And then I also used white or neutral colored strips. So white screams, even darker ones, I flipped to the backside. So I used the reverse of the fabric. So it was even lighter. And man, it made a mess. It was just like piles of just scraps next to my sewing machine. And I'm like grabbing, I'm like, oh, okay. So because I've got papers to do another one, I'm going to inverse it. So in the center where I've got white, I'll use a color. 
And then where I've got, and I may even do it. So it's, there's not a neutral because I've got a ton of, um, yeah, I have a ton of just colored strips. So it may do like warms and cools. Oh, that look good. So we'll see. I don't know. I got to, I'm not going to worry about it quite yet. I got to get through this one block wonder <laughs> to finish first. And we both done this very scrappy, but this can be very planned as well. Yeah. Um, and I think it looks pretty amazing, very planned. Oh, yeah. You know, don't feel like it needs to be a scrappy quilt. It can be a very, like I've seen rainbow effects. Oh, yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah, that are really just stunning and how they planned it. And um, so if you're that kind of designer or whatever, this is definitely, I think it's an easier quilt to do. I would say if your very first quilt is a log cabin, this could be like in your second or third quilt. I don't think it's that hard. It is straight line piecing. Um, you don't have to do it with paper, but you can. And you can definitely do it with a ruler. And the only thing the ruler is needed for is just to square it up. Yeah. So, um, and that's just to keep your, you know, it's square before you add the next set of rows mm -hmm. on it. Because you're adding... Um, you're adding the way mine was done is you cut the strips a certain length and then you um this is different than the way yours was probably done so you would cut let me get to the right area here we go so like i would cut the strips a certain length right and then i would square up these kind of corners before i added the like the puppy dog kind of row so this so this red row goes on first before the puppy dog row goes on um and then i would square up see along that line so that i would make sure that line is straight before i added the red do you see how that kind of builds so yeah. the way you the way you would do it is your strip for the puppy dog quilt is you know about where my mm, about where my fingers are. So I needed it to, I needed to cut this edge kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so I, you pre-cut all, it's a lot of cutting, but a log cabin is too. Um, so you pre-cut all the strips to a certain length. Um, and then you would square up for the next row to go on because you would have these, you know, you weren't cutting the angles until you had it sewn on. Then you would cut the angles and then add the next row and then cut the angles and then add the next row. It's not that hard though. And I would say this is a, you know, advanced beginner quilt. Confident beginner. Confident beginner. I love that. Yeah. But definitely I think one that, and honestly, even though my friend wasn't paying attention, it's a very impressive quilt for not as big a complication. Yeah. Now, how did you end up quilting yours? Because you can get kind of locked in of like, oh, I've just done all this work to piece this and, and like, oh, now what do I do? To, how do I, how do you show it off? Or how do you just say to heck with it? And it gets harder. Two, two things. <laughs> um, someone else quilted this for me because it was before I had a long arm um, and they did a great job, but they didn't do it how I would have done it. And that was one of my I need to own this part of it. So that was one of my, like I had a few of my, like this was one of my first quilts. So I had a few of my first quilts quilted long arm by someone else. And it was kind of my catalyst to go, I don't like giving this um, part of the design artistic process away for someone else's vision. And that bugged me. There's nothing wrong with it at all. But as an artist, I had a hard time letting that go. And that was kind of my cat catalyst of, I need a long arm. So um, they did a great job though. They they did puppy dog paws on it because it's kind of themed really because um, it's got the bones and whatever. And they just did an all over swirl meander with, um, but they put puppy dog paws in the border with, and I wanted them to use um, contrasting fat or, um thread yeah so it was red and they had red throughout the whole thing so the border being black and white it was red on that and so it's not georgia just saying 
UGA, not like just the state, the University of Georgia. Yeah, people have thought that and went, no, 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 it's not that. Nope. So I like dogs. I like lots of dogs. And if it could have been all Salukis, it would have been all Salukis, but they don't have those kind of prints. <laughs> yeah. They have some at Spoonflower. I need to get some. So when I did the first one for mine, which was Hawaiian print fabric, and it was a lot of like blues and some sandy cream colors and all yeah, of that. Yeah, that'd be pretty. Um, I did uh, custom quilting within each block. And it um, because this is like a radiating block design, it's a good opportunity. You can use like a, a big swirl, or I think I did uh, feathers, which was, why not make it more, more is more. <laughs> You know, your quilt though, like, you know. It was going to my mom, so I wanted to do it. Yeah. Good so. I, I think it's a great way to practice new designs. I mean, you know. Man, I finally like, just used up the last bit of that curtain fabric though, like on, on this quilt. Like, <laughs> it was like all oh, the last strips. I'm using them. I think no I might still have a couple curtains. squares left. No more curtains, so you can't sing the hells are alive anymore. I mean, I can. <laughs> but I won't. Because I never did. Yeah, uh, did yeah. And there was a lot of fabric in those curtains. Whew. I was just thinking of the lonely goat herder. Okay. Sorry. Good That's in know. it. Like now you've got me on Broadway in my brain. And so I'm going through the songs. I just saw her interviewed the other day on Graham Norton. She's hilarious. Julie Andrews. Okay. <laughs> you were like, you didn't know? Lisa, like who are we talking about? Julie Andrews. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Julie Andrews. Yeah. All right. Any other last minute tips for pineapple quilts? Uh, there, I, you know, if I think this is one of those, like we should have named this show, the bucket list quilts you should do once, at least once. I've not done another pineapple quilt, but this is one I would do again. I, I did not like it. Yeah. And the way that it turned out was fantastic and take time and do some pretty spectacular borders because even if you think one inch half square triangles is crazy and it is man it looks good so or don't like in mine there is no border there is binding yeah this is one quilt you do not have to border yeah you really don't so all right. Well, hopefully you're all taking care and staying safe and healthy and let us know what sewing projects you're working on. We can leave a comment on our blog or on the YouTube episode or in our Facebook group, What's Up Stitches. And that's all we have for this episode. So again, this episode has been made possible by QT Fabrics. You can learn more about them in the link in the show notes. If you've enjoyed the show, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on notifications on YouTube. More info about our show, as well as links to purchase fan gear, online classes, and quilt patterns can be found on our website, thestitchtvshow.com. Tune in for more quilting chat with friends.